Vad kom? Herregud. Welcome back to my garage. Last video we reassembled the engine with the new 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 rotary valve assembly. Much thicker parts and we deleted the seal in here. There's just a tiny gap now between the axle and the actual uh, aluminium uh, surrounding that axle so hopefully less friction and now i'm performing a pressure test just to see that it's uh, airtight and uh and it is except for it's holding pressure everywhere except for here there's a slight leak in the threads here of this um, exhaust thermocouple which doesn't matter so uh we're good We're ready. I haven't connected the gearbox yet. We're gonna start it up and see if it behaves as you'd expect a two-stroke engine to behave. If it does, and if everything seems fine, and if it's not overheating or anything in the rotary valve or crank area, then I'm taking the rest of the day off. And, uh, and then, tomorrow morning, testing. And then edit and upload a success video. <laughs> Success! So last time, last time we had the engine assembled and uh, did the initial testing. The crank was getting really hot and also the rotary valve assembly and the cover. And now there's absolutely no heat at all. No heat at all. So probably, probably the, maybe that seal because the bore was uh, a little bit tight. Maybe that was too squished and too tight on the axle. And maybe the same thing for the other seal, which is deleted now. And maybe the rotary valve was... Uh, something was distorted in a way that made it rub. Because now it act, it's acting like it should. No heat developed and uh, the crank is still just... Like, no hotter than when I assembled the engine. Rest of the day off to do some stuff around the house and then... Tomorrow morning. So I've got 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. The first one is probably, it should be five, but it's probably not accurate because uh, setting it with, uh, with this uh, adjustable piston stopper and uh, five degrees corresponds to 0.1 of a millimeter. And uh, it's not really the most accurate way, but uh, we'll get in the ballpark and ignition timing won't be completely off. Now we'll start it up and put a light on it. And it's supposed to be sitting flat line at 20 degrees with 30 degrees base timing. If it's sitting somewhere else, we'll adjust base timing until it's sitting at 20 degrees. Unfortunately, I have to be standing where the camera should have been, so this won't be too easy for you to see, but uh, it is what it is. <laughs>
I saw 25 degrees, which means base timing is now sitting at 35, not 30. We'll have to set base timing to 35, and then, uh, then it'll fire at 20, not 25. So now timing should be okay. I'm gonna hook up the belt and tensioner so that the gearbox is connected. And I'm gonna upjet the carb just a little bit, just to be on the safe side. And we're gonna see how it performs. And uh, and today, if it acts as as a normal two-stroke should act, and if it seems to be making normal amount of power, that's it for today, for this Friday. And uh, then we can live in that cloud the whole weekend. Then Monday, hopefully we can start tuning and not troubleshooting. And uh, and then after that, after getting some numbers from this configuration, start playing with the actual configurations I want to play with. One thirty. Jeffrey Weissner Jets. So if we're lucky now, or if I've done everything as they should be done, it should be able to start and it should be able to run with the gearbox connected, which we have been struggling with a lot. Probably because of the friction in the engine. And it couldn't take the added friction from the gearbox assembly, even in neutral. If everything, if it's not like that now, and uh, everything runs fine, then, uh, well, that would be great. <laughs> we'll see. Auto stop enabled. That's why it stopped. There's no power, but uh, it's running okay. On the plus side, things seem to be running fine now. No, uh, no overheating of the crankshaft or the rotary valve cover. It's getting hot, but it's not insanely hot immediately after revving a couple of times, like uh, earlier. So things seem to be uh, working like they should now. On the minus side, we're not making any power at all. The best run here was 5.6 uh, 5.6 horsepower and uh, 2. Point, almost 2.6 newton meters of torque, which is basically nothing. And even if like 50% of the power went into the my belt primary here, it would still not be more than like 11, 12 horsepower. So something is not correct here. Something is uh, could be. It could be terrible cylinder filling, or it could be terrible uh, purity of the mixture. So the exhaust gases are mixing with uh, the fresh gas, and uh, that could be it. It could be the pipe is not like stuff like that would happen if the pipe is not working, doing what it should properly. And uh, the pipe is kind of a hack job now with, uh, with, with all those welded bungs and stuff I used for. Uh, uh, for troubleshooting earlier. So that could be it. Rotary valve timing could be completely off. Maybe I did something wrong when I assembled. We'll have to check that. Fueling, ignition timing, all that stuff could be not optimized, but uh, I think we should have seen more power even though fueling and ignition timing wasn't optimized. So I think there's 
there's either something going on with the uh, rotary valve timing or uh, could be something completely wrong with my uh, with my transfer geometry still even though like it's there's only the B transfers that could be the A transfers are fairly normal aimed correctly as they should have been when I designed it the B transfer transfers got aimed completely like the rear wall of the B transfers were uh, aimed far too much towards the exhaust port uh, like I, I'm not sure what happened in the design process there but uh, they were supposed to be like meeting in the middle I had a center point in mind and uh, I definitely didn't hit that center point the exhaust port is uh, should be big enough now it's certainly big enough in the at the exhaust uh, at the cylinder side could be still well shouldn't be but could still be too small at the exit and the duct exit but I don't think so it could be that it's it is 100% of bore still even though there's a bridge there there could be massive amounts of short circuiting into that into the flanks of the exhaust port uh, or there could be things going on with the wrist pin hole and uh, cross communication between the exhaust and the, the and the transfers because of that when that hole is passing over the ports that could be so something because there's there's obviously no brake mean effective pressure to speak of here with uh, 2.6 newton meters even at 15,500 rpm we'll just have to figure out where what's going on I'm gonna hook up the EGT probe to see how the exhaust gas temperatures are uh, acting and that can give us some clues and uh, check rotary valve timing and uh, play around with the ignition timing and fueling and uh, see where we can get and then and then we can start working on optimizing the cylinder or actually making it work more like because uh, I feel I know how to make a cylinder be powerful and uh, but uh, too much experimental stuff probably like always with me <laughs> well th this these are uplifting results uh, nonetheless because the engine is running it's not overheating things are working I've pulled the rotary valve cover and everything looks better than uh, last time there's still some wear and there's still some uh, black goo but uh, I think it's just unavoidable and it might go away after a little bit uh, a little more running I don't think friction in the rotary valve assembly is the problem now there is some inherent flaw in here and uh, we need to find it we've already checked ignition timing so now I'm checking rechecking rotary valve timing I had this zeroed at, um, at top dead center and uh, I'm just gonna check that everything is like it's supposed to be so the valve is closing at 275 so uh, 360 minus 275 is 85 which means it's the correct close timing the valve is opening at well, 144 it was supposed to be 145 but uh, so that's the rotary valve timing is correct what I intended it to be and this is normal rotary valve numbers for uh, an engine like this so rotary valve timing cannot be the problem ignition timing is good Rotary valve timing is good. Case volume is within acceptable levels for a rotary valve. Squish gap is set correctly. I checked the cylinder and everything, so there's like compression should be good. It's revving, but it's not making power, and I don't believe we lose all that power because of the belt primary into the secondary primary of the AM6 uh, gearbox. There is something wrong with the cylinder. I'm pretty sure there's something. Might be. We've set the squish cap, but maybe, maybe um, port timing is completely off. Maybe at some point too much got skimmed up the top sur of, of the top surface or the bottom or something like that. Or the angles, we'll have to investigate the angles again because I designed the angles of the ports. Uh, they were supposed to be designed to like reasonable, uh, within a reasonable uh, area of uh, angles you you can use for transfers but um, we saw what happened with the B ports where uh, I'll explain later why why the weird angles happened 
and could be something like that with the other angles we'll have to check and also investigate maybe there's too much short circuiting because the the wrist pin hole is passing over i think there's like seven so 14 millimeters from seven millimeters before top dead center to seven millimeters after top dead center where there's communication between the a transfers and the exhaust port i'll also i'll show you this later in uh, in cad but uh i'll just quickly check how much how many degrees that corresponds to that's actually a lot a lot around top that center we're talking 90 degrees of uh of co of communication between the exhaust port and the transfer ports 90 degrees i might have to steal those uh wrist pin caps from the the fritz overmars uh concept engine <laughs> or make some myself that could be our problem could be our problem i think short circuiting is our problem regardless if it is the wrist pin or uh, or something else that trans that mixture is just uh, being directed directly from the transfers and then into the exhaust port and it's a possibility with this design where the exhaust port is so large and so wide and also the transfers are huge and um, so the velocity aren't that high and maybe it's too low and and as soon as the transfer as mixture exits the transfer ports it just like flips around and goes out the exhaust and and that in combination with uh, that wrist pin creating communication between the in the same area between the a transfer and the exhaust port so double bad maybe that's i can't really find any other explanations for this i've hooked up the the egt probe so now we can uh, log the temperature of the exhaust gases and uh and see see if they're really low if they are then there's definitely some uh some uh, short circuiting or at least uh, really bad mixing of gases in the cylinder in the combustion chamber i'm further softening all the edges here just to be absolutely sure there's no sharp edges which that valve can catch not extremely low numbers we saw like 500 c at the highest there which is uh, low but uh not extremely low jan at lung tuning was talking about having trouble with the ignitech ignition units where they seem to not behave like they're supposed to behave where if you set a point at like in my exemplar at, at 8k and then one at 18 uh, it's the ignition unit is supposed to create a, a straight line between do, those two points uh, he said in, in his experience that didn't happen and it actually just stayed at that 8k point until 18 where it just dropped down so what i'm going to try now is to set the ignition timing at a flat line 15 degrees which i know is about right for peak power and then see if we can uh, if there's any difference it might struggle with revving past the dip in the power band but uh we'll see Let's bump it up to 30 degrees, but then bump it down earlier. 12k, bump down. So ignition timing definitely makes a difference here but uh <laughs> not any like we're not gaining power from it it just makes it run or not run so ignition unit malfunction seems to not be the problem we saw egt temperatures at around and a slightly above 500 degrees celsius which aren't that low but still low and also you got to keep in mind my egt probe is sitting pretty much in the exhaust duct so really close to the piston which means it'll read higher numbers should read higher numbers than uh, 
Then you'll see when it's mounted downstream in the header, like like 20, 25 centimeters, four inches or something, like people normally do. So, uh, so the temperature should probably be, it's probably lower, like 500 C is probably l lower than, like it's uh, relatively lower than, it's low, low. <laughs> it's, it's lower than it seems. So here's my cylinder split down the middle. Well, actually, this is more like what it looks like now. Somehow I made the exit area of the exhaust duct too small. I, uh, I knew what area I wanted and, uh, and I got some numbers mixed up and uh, so, but that's fixed now so that shouldn't be our problem. And also you might notice there's no bridge here because this started out as a 100% of more bridgeless exhaust with a special piston and ring and all that stuff but uh, there's a bridge in there now in the current cylinder. It doesn't matter, the port timings and everything should be the same. So first up, what we need to check when we take the, uh, the top off is the distance between the top of the exhaust port and, uh, and the deck, the deck height. And it's supposed to be 18.151 millimeters around there. And that corresponds to about uh, around 200 degrees of exhaust timing. And so if it's far away from that, especially if it's far higher, then that could be our problem. It seems weird that it is because it's uh, the power band is it's hitting a power band and it's pretty hard hitting the power band too. And uh, my experience with a too high exhaust port is that you never get into the power band at all. And here's the um, that wrist pin issue we're talking about. The hole is actually sitting here at top dead center, and this slot corresponds to the range where it uh, where there's communication between this A and actually a little bit of the B port and the exhaust port. And that's uh, seven millimeters. It's not as bad as it looks because there's also a, a wrist pin in here. So that, that hole is uh, effectively smaller. So here you can see the, the transfer and exhaust port layout of the current cylinder. These are the A ports and the, that's the bore, so the port windows. And here, here you can see the angles of, the, of them. And, uh, and you can also see the gray bit here. That's what I've, uh, I've blocked off with a 3D printed insert. Because here's one thing I screwed up. I, you can see how if I show you the... So this is the layout of, my, uh, of the IAME. IAME, I'm not sure how you pronounce that in English, but IAME 50 cylinder, which produced 18 horsepower at the wheel on this dyno. And probably like 23 or something, because through a variator, lots of... Uh, transmission losses and you can see how how I made the because there's there's no my exhaust port is uh, above the transverse all the way which could be a problem but uh, and thereby I could allow myself to make the A ports as you can see here wider closer to the exhaust and uh, and I made the angle steeper at the same time to like to make up for the closer to the exhaustness of those ports. And that was uh, intentional and the right thing to do, I think. And uh, you can see there's not much difference between these, these two ports, except for, for the width there. And uh, same thing goes for the B transfers. But here I screwed up because uh, I made the B transfers wider. And uh, you can't see the, the rest of these ports, but they're, they're pretty much shaped like these ones. And there's a hook here, and uh, so my reasoning was I uh, I wanted to delete the hook and make uh, so I retain the same angle all the way so that the mixture wouldn't have to bend in more than one plane. Could produce more power. There it seems like testing other people's testing have shown that the hooks are necessary. I've deleted that thing now, and there's hook in, hooks in there, but uh, I didn't want. Uh, <coughs> this angle was not supposed to be pointed this much towards the exhaust port. I was supposed to make, like take this angle of the old uh, B ports and uh, make it less steep. So have it pointed more across the cylinder than, than towards the exhaust. And, uh, and this is where I screwed up. And I think actually I can see, because I was learning CAD at the same time. This was my first project in CAD. That uh, This cylinder, that's my first CAD project. And I can actually kind of see where I screwed up. I think when I created the, the port, the ducts, I cut them at, uh, at the line out from bore center uh, when I was supposed to create a new plane. 
sitting at the angle I wanted them to be cut at and then cut there. And uh, this is the process I used for the other parts, but uh, I think I forgot here. But anyways, that's actually like fixed now, or at least temporarily fixed by uh, blocking the ports and having that little hook in there. You can see my exhaust port is uh, much wider than, uh, than the old one. And that could be problematic for short circuiting. But uh, if I, I should, there should be a picture of the Aprilia RSA on screen now, all the, all the exhaust port and the A transfers. And you can see how it doesn't differ much from my, from my layout. Actually, there's more separation between my A port and the, uh, and the exhaust port uh, compared to that Aprilia. And my, uh, my upward angles, all the A, and A, B and C transfer ports are pretty much the standard. We'll have to pull the engine out of the frame and uh, pull the top off and then have a look there and see if uh, I've screwed up port timing, screwed up port timing in a major way or something. This is two millimeters, which means at 45 degrees, the distance is uh, 2.83 millimeters. So I'm reading two, two point, 20.18. And we've got to subtract 2.83 millimeters from that. That's 17.35. So it's actually, so our exhaust timing, effective for the exhaust timing, the port actually opens a little bit before that because of that bevel. But we're actually, we're sitting at 206 millimeters and plus the bevel bringing it up to 210 or something. Which is more than uh, I planned for. We're supposed to be, say, effective 198 or thereabouts. This could be the problem, but it seems weird as it's running as good as it is. As nothing seems to be in the obscene territory. I'm starting to wonder if uh, well, it's making that short circuiting through the wrist pin theory more and more plausible some of you might remember this is in my possession now this is uh, Fritz Overmars's FOS concept engine FOS engine these are the things I'm talking about the the wrist pin hole blockers I'll have to give Fritz a, a call and ask if uh, if it's okay, I borrow these for a little while. Or if he has more of them. I know they're uh, made of some kind of uh, special plastic. I'll be back when, uh, when I've talked to him. I forgot what I was actually going to say before talking about this. Maybe that black stuff we've been seeing throughout the engine. Maybe that black stuff, maybe it's actually combustion residue. Because of this uh, 90 degrees of possible short circuiting. Maybe the exhaust is pushing pushing uh, exhaust gases through the transfers down into the crankcase during at, at the round top dead center and maybe that's why we're seeing this black stuff in the in the roll pre valve assembly and in the crankcase and that should that would explain a lot about uh, no power production and stuff because maybe there's maybe there's much higher pressure coming from the exhaust port at or the exhaust at uh, at top dead center and it's pushing and filling the crankcase diluting the fresh mixture with exhaust gas and uh, I ran a simulation of the old engine in the Engmod 2T doesn't matter which engine just a normal two stroke with a pipe and um, just to have a look at what kind of exhaust pressure we could expect at, uh, at top dead center if you want real power from a two stroke you need the remainder of the previous exhaust pulse to strengthen the current exhaust pulse to have that happen you need a high pressure pulse in the exhaust colliding with the piston just before the port opens and and that uh, that pulse can join with the new pulse traveling and then making the like starting point for the new pulse higher in a in a way so the exhaust pressure is not only is it high and probably pushing spent gases through the transfers into the crankcase mixing with the fresh mix not only is that happening but i've also created an outlet for that super positioned pulse to re relieve it and not have it strengthen strength, strengthen the next pulse 
This, I think this is a really plausible theory. So communication between the exhaust port and the transfers start about here. And here the exhaust pulse is, uh, is negative. It's actually helping the, helping filling the crankcase. But then quickly it becomes positive and starts pushing expend gases back into the, through the transfers into the crankcase possibly. And this continues all the way through the, the, the communication phase. I think we're onto something. I always think I'm onto something, but now I really think I'm onto something because I can't find anything, anything wrong. Really, I can't find anything wrong now. Anything wrong enough to be a real problem. But this could be it. Could be it. I got to go from Fritz to uh, to borrow these um, these uh, wrist pin hole plugging things. If this works, then uh, revisiting these. Uh, special symmetrical two-piece pistons could actually be a, a good idea. The black residue in there does smell combusted too, which uh, further strengthens, strengthens my theory. They're not perfectly flush with the surface, but uh, this should help the, the communication between transfers and exhaust ports uh, immensely. Because now there's, there's no straight path across here into the, from the exhaust into the transfer ports. It's just a tiny gap. So um, this should help and uh, hopefully this makes a huge difference. We'll see. It's the next day. I've changed my mind about um, about not doing anything about the cylinder sitting too high. Point five six squish acceptable. Same procedure as every time. We'll start it up without the gearbox connected and uh, see if it behaves, and then hook up the gearbox. And uh, let's hope now that uh, this has made a difference. We'll see. I know what a soft jaw means about it, about the uh, about the matter. <laughs> So far, so good. Let's hook up the gearbox and uh, see how it behaves. Never-ending story! So we had a water leak from under the cylinder, probably into the cylinder too, because it was acting weird, cutting out and... Uh, and uh, so uh, the power numbers are invalid. And uh, But it didn't seem like there was... Uh, didn't seem to be more powerful than, uh, than it was. But uh, water ingress into the crankcase and cylinder. Maybe now that it's sitting a little bit lower, it's butting up against something. Oh, I can see where uh, the cylinder is. There's a step here. I can see how the aluminium has been pushed away here. So it needs to be...
Still leaking. I think what uh, happened here is uh, when there was this little uh, lip there or that corner with uh, the raised section. When I uh, torqued this down and uh, deformed the uh, material here, I think I it probably pushed material down here and then at the same time raised raised this surface a little bit. Like it's not noticeable but uh, enough so that when there's uh, pressure in the coolant system uh, there's a gap there and water will seep through. I'm gonna skim 0.3 millimeters off this surface so that I can uh, use this gasket material to, uh, to have some more like compliance in this area in case there's like to help with sealing. And uh, then we won't have to use this goo all the time, which I'm actually out of now. The transfer geometry is fairly normal. The exhaust port width is well, not normal, but, uh, but normal in, in racing applications. The proximity between the exhaust port and the A-transfers is also normal in racing applications. The transfer ducts are normal in uh, racing applications. Crankcase volume, normal in racing applications. Rotary valve timing, normal in racing applications. Squish cap, ring clearance, normal in racing applications. There's one thing left here that's not normal. And that's my exhaust port, the height, that it doesn't protrude below the transfer roofs. And this is great for velocity and there's more than enough area in that exhaust port to, uh, to have the cylinder <coughs> for combustion gases to escape fast enough. I'm starting to think maybe the, there's too high velocity at the port window and so this causes uh, transfers to lose control. They lose control and then they head for the exhaust because the exhaust there's too much velocity from uh, at uh, in that area in the exhaust port and uh, already initiated travel in that uh, direction and uh, and then that continues. And also there's uh, the hardest suction from the exhaust is around bottom dead center. So probably a, that's probably where the velocity is highest too except for before the transfers open when there's uh, um, yeah, except for when the transfers open, but when the transfers are opened, the highest velocity is probably around bottom dead center, and um, that's when there's highest possibility for the exhaust to suck all the mixture out of the cylinder. So I'm wondering if, uh, if that's our thing. There's too much, too high velocity at the exhaust port now. Great with high velocity downstream of the port, but at the port, maybe too much, too high velocity. So this area is what I'm gonna grind away. Blend into the rest of the exhaust duct. Let's see how uh, well this tool fares. It's uh, definitely not meant to run big burrs like this. And uh, and I've had these fail on me multiple times. You probably can't see anything at all here. <laughs> I think I'm gonna save this for uh, when it's absolutely needed. And I think I can list the bulk of the work done with uh, with a file. I wish I had some bigger burrs for the die grinder so that I could longer ones so that I could reach in there but um well, this will work but it'll take forever. A really long four flute carbide end mill chucked up in a wood router. This might not work at all go horribly bad or actually work great. Either way I don't recommend you try this. You gotta be ice cold, but uh, this will work. A shorter end mill and should behave a little uh, more uh, civilized. Ooh. Careful. Don't want to destroy that bridge. <laughs> this might be the beginning of the end.
I'll keep on cutting and uh, I'll bring you back when either the cylinder has been destroyed or uh, we're ready for some uh, finishing touches. I've reverted back to uh, to filing, which is uh, slow and boring, but uh, but much less uh, controllable, much more controllable and uh, and worth it versus destroying the cylinder. The right angle dental tool has uh, bit the dust. There's still, like we're uh, we're getting there. I'm gonna like do what I can with this tool and then uh, clean it up with sandpaper. And uh, we should have uh, created enough of a normal exhaust port for this to make a difference and uh, at least point us in the in the right direction. It's not perfect by any means, but I think uh, for testing purposes and to see if this has an effect, it's um, good enough. The bridge got a couple of bad knocks there from uh, from my uh, wood router uh, adventure. more conventional port. Let's see how it behaves. Almost 0.6 which is uh, excessive but uh, will work fine for testing purposes. And also on the safe side at high rpm so uh, we're good. Oh! <laughs> Remember how this needs to be tightened last. There's a slight leak in the threads of the EGT probe again. Place that probe with a um, bolt and a copper washer for uh, for now just to make sure there's no other leaks seems to be a minor leak somewhere leak is coming from here that blanking plate that's the stuffer stuffing the this is the old primary intake I think the problem is how I can't tighten these bolts really hard because they're just threaded into the PLA and uh, and so it doesn't create a proper seal here. Next day my fix yesterday is not leaking there's still a leak though there's a leak into the bolt hole here and when I plug that it's leaking out here. This means we'll have to uh, split the case again. There was one place I didn't check for leaks because it, it's not part of the engine and it's this uh, bung here this blanking plug thing and of course it was leaking. After clamping the case halves together here with a bolt as uh, like this bolt is part of the cradle so this will be clamped when it's mounted in the in the frame and plugging this hole with my thumb and the leak is gone so now the, there's no leak okay as always first start up without the gearbox connected and see if it behaves and then It's running at least. I'll hook up the belt and uh, then we'll see. It's uh, tempting to uh, just go and do something completely different now because, uh, nah. Didn't make much of a difference at all. In a desperate attempt to make something happen, I've uh, replaced the pipe with one of these. It's uh, currently hooked up with a silicone hose, so uh, probably won't last too long. But just to see if we can make it do anything 
different. <laughs> Why is my dyno suddenly not working? Ah, oh, the silicon hose is dying. Maybe all we need is a short little stub. This might be a recipe for disaster, but uh, I think that's too thin to even hold here now. Yeah, no. This is definitely a failure. <laughs> After failing to modify that brass fitting, I had to make this out of a solid piece of bar stock. Which took some time, and I'm running out of time now if I want to get this video edited and uploaded today, Friday. So now I'm curious to see how it behaves with this longer, much more mellow pipe. The theory about the high velocity exhaust port overpowering the transfers at bottom dead center is still valid, I think, if this... Uh, if this works and uh, could also be my pipe is too short and uh, who knows maybe I could have been another mistake there where I uh, where it's not the length it was intended to be we'll have to measure it but first let's see how this uh, today let's see how it behaves with this pipe and uh, hopefully we get some kind of a success and we can end the video and and uh, enter the weekend on a high note for once Nothing to write home about, but now let's try my uh, original pipe, but with the extension and see, uh, see if there's a difference. A lower timing uh, at around uh, 14,000 and see what happens. Well, actually, race timing. I think that's the happiest ending we can get. We went from six to uh, over nine horsepower with, uh, with the pipe extension. There's something weird going on because uh, with all the port areas and stuff, the, this cylinder should be more than capable of, uh, of, uh, of having enough flow at high RPM like the pipe was uh, originally intended to be, be used for. So, uh, but hey, nine, over nine horsepower versus wheel horsepower versus uh, six so that's a win it's a win this video is a win <laughs> see you next time